I have a big discussion, but try to make sure. You know, sometimes you are entitled to get something. Because of your some good things, Allah is going to give you. Third thing, ask only thing you need. As I mentioned yesterday, some of you were there. Sometimes we ask something which is not necessary right now. No wise person is going to grant you. So Allah is not going to give you. I gave you an example yesterday. If you are asking, Allah give me a car, the car is not essential for you. Where are you going to use? You have no driving license. So what are you going to ask? What do you need right now? You have to just recognize right now your true need. What is your true need? Is? Your need is to like give you good understanding, sharp memory. Right? That's your need right now. So whenever you start acquiring knowledge, you can understand without any problem. When you are understanding without any problem, you grow in your life. Because that is your need right now. You need good health. You need good understanding. You need good sharp memory. That things are required for you. So ask for. It. And how you ask? Very simple. The Quran. Our Prophet used to pray all the time in his salat. What he was used to pray? Rabbi Zidni Ilma. Oh Allah, increase in my knowledge. Oh Allah, increase my knowledge. Whenever our Prophet is asking, Allah increasing his knowledge. Even his knowledge was infinite. We cannot calculate how much knowledge he has. He knows everything. But still he was asking. When a knowledgeable person asking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, oh Allah increase my knowledge. In this case, we like ignorant people, we must ask much more than that. Right? So this is one dua. You always remember in your age, this dua is essential. But when you ask, number one, whenever you get a chance, you have to ask. Basically, when you are finishing your prayer, Always ask something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before you leave your prayer rug or salah. That's one thing. Number two, okay, not necessarily you are always ask after prayer. You can ask some other time too. Okay, whenever you start your homework or study, you have to ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah give me ability to understand that thing easily and make my memory strong so I can remember these things. So Allah can give you good sharp memory, you can understand something, as soon as your understanding level goes up, you have good bright future. So this thing we always ask, but we never ask this. We always ask something which is not necessary for us. All of because that boy and that, uh, that type of toy or that type of things, all are grant me that things, that thing not going to be beneficial for you because they have only limited time, limited time. After a few days, you are going to be frustrated with these things, you are going to leave it aside. But when you ask something which is long lasting for you, you are going to take advantage for it. Let me give you one sweet story, then I give you the etiquette of asking dua, so you can connect it to me. See, you heard one of our great scholars, Nima Allama Bakar Majlisi. You heard this name? If you never heard, then you will like understand about him. He is the scholar who wrote the book, is called Beharul Anwar. It's the biggest book of Islam. How many volumes it has? 110 volume books. How many volumes? 110 volume books. And he has many other books. One day his father, Majlisi, he was just praying in the night. Amazi Shab. Night prayer, right? He was offering Salat, praying his Salat. Duration of his Salat, he feel this is the time Allah is going to accept my prayer. I have to ask something. Good. And he feels, because of pious people, they feel like that. This is the moment Allah is going to grant whatever I ask from him. So, he said, what I am going to ask is long lasting. I don't want to ask something which is just temporary, beneficial and then no benefit at all. So he said, I am going to ask something which is long lasting. He was thinking and suddenly Allah Mabakam was busy. He was in prayer. He started crying. And his father's attention was on prayer rub. His attention diverted to him. He said, why not I ask for him? And immediately asked, Oh Allah, this is the dua mentioned I in the book right. But he asked, Oh Allah, make this boy a scholar in Islam or like give him a knowledge and allow him to spread Islamic knowledge all over the world. But he said, Oh Allah. Bring this boy as a scholar, give him knowledge, so he can spread the Islamic knowledge not only in family, not only
only in his circle, but all over the world. All over the world. Jahani means all over the world. And immediately, Allah granted his prayer. And what happened? He became Allah Mubakar Manjisi. Who wrote 110 volume book. Who, who, who prayed for him? His father. What? When he prayed? In the Malishab. And Allah granted him that thing. Now, today, everywhere you go, any scholar unable to deliver his speech without using his book. So he's getting benefit, you know. The I am like reciting when he's here, I am not reading from him. Other scholars, all over the world, people are using his work. So he is getting share out of that. He's getting benefit. So whatever he left, he got from his father's prayer. But this is long lasting to us. He asked for his son and Allah granted him. And what he granted, we can see the result today. That means Allah can grant whatever we want. But only we have to become wise to ask something which is beneficial for us. <coughs> that is the thing. Now, you are not at that level, you can understand that part. But at least you understand at your level. But I'd like to bring you. And you can understand at your level and try to understand what you are going to ask from Allah. Let's recite loud for Allah. Allah. Well, you have two ways. Number one, either you get chance to ask from Allah SWT, or you create yourself an opportunity to ask from Allah SWT. If you get chance, that is your lucky. You know, you are sitting in the majlis. After every majlis, you have to ask something from Allah SWT. Especially after the Messiah, if you are crying, that is the best moment to ask something from Allah SWT. When your eyes our way, you have tears in your eyes. If you ask anything, Allah will be granted. If you reach to this level, sometimes, right? This is the best moment to ask something for Allah SWT. This is, you got some chance to ask, right? But no, we have to create some moment to ask something from Allah SWT. In this more special moment, Allah never refused the slave to grant whatever he is asking. So, we have to feel when is the right moment to ask something from Allah SWT. But how we create that moment? Number one, we have number one, get cleanliness. First thing for like dua is tahara, cleanliness. But what type of cleanliness we need? It's spiritual and physical. First we have to obtain physical tahara, then we have to get spiritual. If you recite Lord Sabbath, please. How you obtain physical tarat? You obtain physical tarat by doing wazu, wazu, tayammu, right? These are the physical, you know how to perform wazu. If you are performing correct wazu, you take benefit of that, right? If you are performing right wazu, you can take physical tarat. But physical tarat is not enough. You have to have a spiritual tarat. Your nafs, your root, your spirit must be part. How you make it part? You know, you can watch because it's inside, right? So how your body get polluted by Najasat, our heart and our spirit get polluted. And our spirit is polluted. Number one thing, which is make your nafs najis, right? Your spirit najis is sin. Anytime you make mistake, you have sin, Allah not going to grant your dua. One of the things, at time of the Musa, at the time of Hazrat Musa, one guy, he said, I am very, let's say, I do so many mistakes, right? And he still, Allah is not punishing me. And I get punishment. So, where is the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If I am doing sin, I am going against him, he's supposed to punish me, but he's not punishing me. So, Hazrat Musa asked from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that guy, he said, he make mistakes, he do always bad deeds. Why you not punishing him? And what Allah answered him? Allah said, I already punished him. But he is not realizing. He said, what type of punishment he got? You see, he got the punishment whenever he pray or offer his prayer, dua, other things, he never enjoy. I took the lust that means enjoyment from his worship. Whenever he worship, he never enjoy, he never feel good. So that means, I am not going to connect to him, he is not going to get from him. Means, sin actually blocks the relationship between us and Allah SWT. 
this is one type of like majasa correct over like speak and we are able to connect to allah subhanahu wa because we connecting spiritually help to allah subhanahu wa so you have to be at the level where we can talk to allah subhanahu wa allah can answer our call this allah say adoni asta jib lo kon call me i will answer so answer going to come to you if we connect to you where we connect if we are clean light okay that's not only one type of majasa when we do mistake number 2 Second type of najasat which occupied our soul and not allowed to connect Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is bad feelings about others. How bad feelings? Jealousy. Anyone who feels jealous, Allah never answers his call. Why? Jealousy. Why is jealousy coming in your heart? Because you feel wrong. Allah gave me more, and He gave me less. As soon as you think about it, you are thinking you are. Like unknowingly telling Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, Allah, you are unjust. You gave that person something, and you didn't give, you didn't give me anything. So you are unjust. And when you are feeling Allah is unjust, how can Allah give you something? Because you are not recognizing Him as He is. So that means we have to remove jealousy from our heart. So how we remove jealousy from our heart? Very simple thing. Very simple way. You know, you have to think whatever you got. Never do it. Hate the people what they have. That is the difference. That is the main difference. Where is the main thing is when you are looking at other people, other person, this, 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 this thing, and you always feel jealous. Okay, Allah gave him this, this, this thing. I didn't have this thing, and you feel jealous. And as soon as jealousy comes in your heart, you're going to lose the contact to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. When you are worshiping and asking from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, you're not going to get. So, so you only think whatever you got from Allah. Allah gave you so many things, much better than Him. Allah is just He gave someone maybe good physics, someone have good memory, someone have big family, someone have big money. It's Allah giving everyone something what they need, whatever is good for them. But normally we are not realizing, we are not understanding. We leaving everything aside. Beside thanking Him, we are complaining. When we complain against Allah, Allah not going to grant whatever we want, right? So this one, what thing polluted your heart or it's all is jealousy. So we have to remove the jealousy. Second thing, any person keep hatred of a moment in his heart, Allah never answer his call. You see, this is the thing. If you are feel bad about the moment in, right? That thing is so bad. Allah never feel good. And then he not going to answer our call. So we have to clean our soul. How we clean our soul? We have to elevate our status. Come to the level where we can talk to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and get our answer. Besides Allah, please. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So there is a big discussion by me. Shall holding right here. We shall be other times. We may go in deep and understand. How we have to purify ourselves to reach to the level so we can connect to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and get our wishes. This one verse. Okay, go to next level. After that, there, there are some other levels. Whenever we make this third thing, whenever we make our parents unhappy, you see, if we do something, our parents feel bad, and we ask something from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, we are not going to get it all. Why? Because Allah said in the Quran and some other Hadith verses, Allah emphasized respect of the parents more than six times in the Quran on different places, and He immediately asking to be nice to the parents after worshiping or asking to worship Him, right? That is the status of parents. Allah put the parents just after Him. So their respect is so high. You have to. So how we to make our parents happy? That is very important. And if we make our parents upset, Allah is not going to answer our call. We are not going to get our wishes, and there is no growth in our life. So we have to first thing make our parents happy. If we make our parents happy, then Allah. Will. This Allah said in the other in the Hadith, very strong Hadith. Listen carefully. If you want to know, your Lord is pleased with you, or 
How you can define? We are able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have no his phone number to call him, ask, say you are alive, are you happy with me or not? We have no way. So how we how we understand Allah is pleased with us or not is the only one way. What way is mentioned in the revival? This is very short, but it is not understand carefully. But Prophet said, Prophet said, you look at your parents. If your parents are pleased with you, they are happy, that means Allah is happy. If your parents are upset, that means Allah is upset. That is the relationship. It is very, very important. I am not going to discuss about etiquette of respecting parents because this is not a topic this time. But you see, this is the main point. If you make your parents unhappy, you are not going to get anything in your life. If you make your parents happy and they pray for you, you have everything in your life, whatever you want. Let me give you one very short and sweet story. Listen. Hazrat Musa, very famous story, but it's maybe new for the these young kids. Listen carefully. Very sweet story. One day Hazrat Musa asked from Allah, oh Allah, you know, I'm going to live in Jannah. But I want to know who going to be my neighbor, who going to live with me in Jannah. And Allah said, okay, I give you address, go, you live in that town, and you can visit him, and meet him, he's going to be your neighbor. So Hazrat Musa got the address from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he came to the town, he found he have a, like, meat shop, he's a, he's serving. So Hazrat Musa went to his shop and he asked, I'm a stranger, I came in this city to visit, and I want to be your guest, can you accept me as a guest? In the ancient time, people like guests, and whenever they get guests, they feel very happy. You say, I'm very happy, so I will take you to my home. But right now, I'm busy in my shop. Stay a few minutes, a few hours. As soon as I close my shop, you go with me, and inshallah, I will take you to my house, and you will stay with me as a guest. So, he closed his shop, and Hazrat Musa and that guy who had shop, they came to the, his house. He said, he gave the place to Hazrat Musa, relax, he stay there, and he start cooking. When he cooked, he didn't serve to Hazrat Musa. What he did? He went to the room, a small room. And when he went to inside the room, he started feeding someone. Hazrat Musa was looking at a very old lady. She was just inside a cradle type thing. And he was changing his clothes and feeding by his own hand. When he finished his work, take care of his mother, then he came out and served the food for Hazrat Musa. And he said, who was that? And the guy said, she was my, she's my mother, and she's very sick, handicapped, unable to do anything. I normally wash her, I like feed her myself and take care of her. You see, you are very lucky, you take care of your parents in this moment. You see, Hazrat Musa, he said, but I don't understand. You are a wise person, I want to share one thing with you. This guy is saying to Hazrat Musa. He said, whenever I, treat her good, I help her, I, I feed her. She pray for me. What she pray for me? He say, oh my son, Allah make you friend of Hazrat Musa. What she pray for him? Oh Allah, make my son friend of Hazrat Musa. He say, I am surprising, she asking so big things. I am a pleasure, I live in this town. Musa is a prophet, not only a prophet, he is a among the one of the five great prophets, and how come I become friend of him? It was not, it was not possible. But my mother gave me this dua. She always pray like that for me. As the Musa said, I am Hazrat Musa, and your prayer of your mother is granted. You are not only friend of me in this world, but you are going to live with me in paradise. You are going to be my neighbor. So when you serve your mom good, you see, your mother prayer is going to be accepted not only fruitful in this world, but also fruitful in hell. Besides about this. Muhammad. So now, how many times you think? Listen, only honestly answer. Don't answer like rightly, but keep in your mind the answer, okay? How many times you feel I really done something good for my mother, and my mother must pray for me. Even though you do good for your mother or not, she's going to pray. But when you feel, ever you felt like that, I've really done something good. My mother is going to feel proud on me and she's going to pray for me. If you felt like that, you are most luckiest person in the I believe. If you done so, it's really. 
or vice versa. How many times you put your parents in the situation they cry because of your naughtiness? This verse. I hope no one is in this crowd. They make their parents at the level they cry, right? Alhamdulillah, you are all good and nice people. If you never, never ever see them in a situation where they felt bad or cry or say, why my this boy is so naughty, he is making this. Okay, let me give you. Because you understand that I am going on that level. You understand? Dua, you stress. We are what we are talking. We are discussing a dua. So whose dua is acceptable? Your parents' is dua is acceptable. Yesterday I mentioned same thing. You have to make your parents pray for you by your efforts. They pray regularly for you, but when you do something special for them, you are going to get a special prayer from them. You have to make them to pray for you specially. They are praying for you, but you have to make them to pray for you by doing something good. When they feel proud, when you get good marks, when you do your homework on time, when your teachers tell good about you, when other people tell good about you, at the time they feel proud. And when they feel bad, when some men complain about you, you know, we saw, oh, I saw your son, he is doing that naughty thing. They feel shame, they feel bad. You know? We never ever allow our parents feel like that in their life, right? Even though Allah is not going to punish you because you are young, you are not at the level where your deeds start or something, but still we have to start practicing right now. So when you grow, we can touch to that, reach to the level, get benefit out of it. So to understand that thing, please read loud some more. So I can go next one. Muhammad So that's why. So this is a simple thing, but this is important to know about the dua. How? So we have taharat, spiritual taharat, then we have to like the physical taharat, then we have to do something, make good relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We never ever or able to make good relation with Allah unless we make good relation with our parents. For making good relation, we have to do something nice, we feel proud of it. And then we can go from it. Now, next thing. Sometimes, some timings are very affected in dua. You know? A special moment where Allah never refuse your dua. You have to understand the timings. You know? Some timings are very important. In Sharia, is mentioned, if you ask, Something from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. There's special timings. Due to the respect of the time, Allah is going to answer. But one thing is very general, general thing. Let me tell you very important part. Who have understand? Shall I memorize the thing? I revise mentioning among 24 hours, whole day, one moment always come in your life. Allah is going to grant your wishes. So what does that it mean? Means in 24 hours, we never wish something bad. We don't know which moment is that. <coughs> if we are wishing something wrong, and that is the moment of like accept our prayers, and that thing is accepted, and we are go. We lose something, right? So never ever wish something bad for anyone, or especially for yourself or your family. Never ever wish something bad. Because among 24 hour cycle, there is some moment always come in your life when you Allah going to grant your wishes. So always wish good. We don't know wishes. Especially what is that? Today was Friday. We Fatima Zara Salamullah said, Yes, I love Salah. Allah, 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 Muhammad, Allah. A special moment when Allah accepts your dua, when sun is setting down in his half set. We Fatima sent a slave outside, a room, and he's observing. When the sun is setting down on Friday, right? And half said, we said, if you ask something at that moment, Allah is going to grant your wishes. So, already Friday is passed, you have to remember up to the next Friday. Remember that time. That time is a special time. Very important time. <coughs> Always ask your wishes at that time. And best thing you do, send salvat for Muhammad and Allah. Please send right now. One thing I mentioned in like my like the Juma Khutbah several times, but you have to remember that on day of Juma, which are today, right? If someone recites Salwar, how many times? Hundred times. 
It's very simple. It's take only maybe four, four minutes, five minutes maximum. Keep the service slowly, nicely, Allah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and Muhammad Muhammad, and eight words, words, Ajil Farajam. How you say Allah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and Muhammad Ajil Farajam. If you recite hundred times on Juma, Allah is going to grant you sixty things. How many wishes Allah is going to grant you? Sixty. Sixty. Thirty in this world and thirty in hereafter. So then it's not like the small reward you're getting for reciting salwat. Because when Allah created everything for the sake of Allah, if Allah grants 60 things for us, there's nothing in comparison whatever Allah gave to Muhammad in Allah. Muhammad. This is how it works. Allah! Muhammad! Muhammad! Okay, now let me discuss something very important, okay? You ask something from Allah SWT. But we have to know the etiquette of asking. Number one, you have to purify yourself, keep your heart clean, right? How you remove jealousy and other hatred of other people from your heart? Ask something for others first, then for yourself. Then you feel good, right? Oh Allah grant him something, 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 for everyone, right? Ask for other people, then ask for yourself, right? Allah going to grant you. Again, you have to sit toward the Qibla. Raise your hand. You see, when you are asking something, you have to raise your hand to show your need to Allah SWT. That is the way you have to show your need to Allah SWT. So raise your hand, look between your hands, right? Especially what they are recommending, if you are wearing a ring, you have to turn the stone toward you and then ask if you are wearing it. That's better. This is recommending the revived pattern. And then recite salwat three times before you are asking anything from Allah SWT, right? Recite three times salwat, then ask something for others especially for your parents, your friends, other things, then in between the other people's wishes, mix your wish. Then again ask, recite three times salawat, and then you finish that. And that is the way Allah is going to grant you what you ask. So this is the timing very important, especially after every salat, before Fajr prayer is a good time. The most important time, remember guys, okay, very important. The time, two timings are very good. When Allah never refuse your wishes, Allah always grant your wishes. Two times. Remember, not down if you forget, okay? This is very important. Number one, between Azan and Akama. When? When Azan is over, they are giving Akamat, in between there is a few moments. Ask your wishes. Allah never refuse your wishes at time. You know, Mullah Rahmatul Sahib used to come here, someone talk during Azan, he get <laughs> become angry. Why? Because you lose lots of sawab. I saw a hadith. In hadith where say if someone talk during <coughs> azan, he lose 40 years of his worship time. Allah remove 40 years of his worship from his deed. So this is not a big, small loss. It's big loss. So never talk. Utter the salat. Because one person came to this is another important because we are not discussing like the Etiquette of Azan, etiquette of Akama. These all things I have 200 things to discuss with you. Etiquette of everything which is related to your life. So in etiquette of Azan, what they are saying, one person visit to Prophet and complain is like poor. You know, Prophet, I am very poor. Give me some dua so I become rich. But Prophet said, go and whenever you listen the Azan, repeat the Azan, Allah is going to make you rich. So you see, repeating Azan is very useful. So when you are repeating the Azan, as soon as you finish the Azan, ask your wishes, Allah will grant you wishes. This is one thing. Second thing, between two khutbah, if you are attending Juma prayer, recite Lao Salwat please. Lao Salwara Muhammad Wale Muhammad. Okay, before I go next, okay, you may ask him, okay, Maulana, we are coming here only once a while, and when we are, when once a while we are attending the Namaz, so then at the time we hear the Azan, and then we have to ask. No, no, no. You create opportunity by yourself. It's not necessary you to come to masjid and some mozin is giving azan and then you are you going to ask your wishes. No, no. At home you can give azan yourself. Right? When you are giving azan, immediately you ask your wishes. It's not mentioned when you only come to the mosque and you give azan, then you ask Allah going to grant. No, any azan you call at your home and you ask your wishes, Allah going to grant. So remember, you have to give azan at least once a day at your home. Shayati not going to enter. He was not going to enter in your house 
and not disturb your life. So azan is good. To call azan at home is required. Don't allow to only your clock give azan. After azan is going to be get benefit. You are not going to get benefit. You lose the benefit. Decide some about this. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa'ale. Second thing, which is very important to ask your wishes. Between two khutbah, if you are coming in the Juma prayer and you see, I am giving khutbah and between two khutbah, if you ask your wishes, Allah is going to grant your wishes. So this is good thing. Sometimes when you get opportunity to come, many of you used to come in Juma prayer sometimes. When you are participating in the Juma, ask your wishes at that time, Allah is going to grant your wishes. Now, this is the time. Now one more important part. Inshallah I conclude because I don't want to go too long. Okay? So second. Sometimes place is very important in your wishes to get your wishes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, grant your wishes. Place is very important. Which place are important? Number one, if you visit any shrine of our Imam and you ask something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will come. If you go to visiting Holy Kaaba, Right? When you get chance for Hajj and Umrah, when you ask anything, Allah is going to grant you. When you are, okay, when you, you are going to ask your wishes, this is very important. Because other kids are sitting here, you know, many young ones may not understand, may not you understand their thing, but that other people, like what explain to you. What is that? If you go to Umrah or Hajj, first time when you look at the Holy Kaaba, and you ask anything, Allah is going to grant you three wishes right away. How many wishes are you going to get? Three wishes. Any wish you ask, which is really good, may Allah not grant something which is not useful for you. I told you yesterday, it's very clear. You have to ask something we really need. You need help. This is your, you're deserving for that. You need wealth. You're deserving for that. You need good memory. You're deserving. You must be a deserving candidate for their wish. If you're asking something you are not deserving, the Allah is not going to grant you. So first, you have to reach to the level or understand something whatever really you need. You need your parents' help. You need your parents to remain alive long time. So ask something which you are deserving, right? Then Allah is going to grant you. I know any person who is asking something good and related to his life and he deserving, Allah is going to grant you. So these three wishes you can get when you go to the second thing. When you visit any shrine of any imam, especially if you go to like the shrine of Imam Hussain, you stand under that kubba, you call the tomb, and you ask anything, you are going to get it. Because this is a part of Jannah, and in the Jannah, this is thing. If you ask anything, Allah is going to grant it. But it, I tell you my experience, inshallah, just conclude with that. If you visit the shrine of Imam Ali Raza Alayhi Salaam, besides Allah. And if you ask something there, you're going to get what you ask. There's one wish of Imam Raza always fulfilled. If you go there and ask anything while you're looking at the Zari first time, immediately ask something good. And you're going to get it. Many, many people, not only one, two. I have many people. They share their views with me. They told whatever they asked from Imam Raza, they got it. So may, some of you may have visited there, some of not. So your check is still blank, you can write anything you want. Right? So whenever you visit the shrine of Imam Raza, remember my word. Use that thing. Ask something good. Ask something good, but you need really. Sometimes we ask something which is maybe not useful for us. Right? Or short term. Or short term, you know. We never ask short term things from Imam or when we are getting that type of opportunity, right? We have to ask something big, which is useful for long term. Which is useful for long term. It is not time to teach you the dua, how to ask the dua. Never think. Okay, important part. Inshallah, in the week, go to the Masai session, right? <coughs> there are the hadith. What hadith are saying? A dua I am just quoting some of these to summarize whatever I said. Means dua is the main part of your worship. Without dua, there is no worship is considered. Right? Your worship is not complete. 
is one thing. Number two, Adwa Sirahul Mami. Dua is weapon for a moment. How you use your weapon? To protect yourself from something, right? So dua is much stronger than weapon. Weapon you can only kill the enemy. But from dua, you can save yourself from any things which is not suitable for you, any unfortunate things or unpleasant things. You can save for yourself from This is the third thing. A dua, yaraddul qaza. That is very important. What is the effect of the dua? Dua can change, dua can change the death to the life. Dua can change death to the life. Okay. That's like, let me give you one last story, shortest one. And I just studying about it, it's a very small and short story. One guy, he came to Imam Hussain al And he said, oh, Imam Hussain, my mother has just died and she has lots of wealth and she died without leaving a will for me or telling where this wealth is. So please help me. Without that wealth, my life will be miserable. Imam has many companies, asked the company, let's come with me and we have to solve the problem with this brother. Right? So Imam Hussain came with the company to the house and her mother was dead. Sleeping on the bed, Imam just stand next to him, that lady and just start praying. You see, Imam's prayer never refused. That is our Imam, yeah? never refused. The Imam asked to Allah make this lady alive. And immediately that old lady becomes alive. She is sitting back and reciting Kalma. She is reciting Kalma and just like she is awakening from sleep. I was dead. I become alive because of your dua. It's long story. I'm making sure. And they said, she said, you made me alive because you want to know where my wealth is. So I made my wealth like I hide my wealth in certain places, so my son can get. But no, I am giving you my wealth. And one third is for me, and two third is for my son. If he is your follower and believing in you. But she said, because I am your follower, right? So if my son is your follower, he can get my two third of wealth. Otherwise, you are free to give anyone you like. And then she again sleep in. Look at all Imam make her life for a moment. But in other cases, Imam gave life to many persons, they live long life after that. So Imam, Imam can make any dear person alive because this is the power Imam God. So you see, but what she said, only we get something if we are believing in our Imam. So this is the proof you are sitting here listening to the majlis because you connect with Imam Hussain. And this story I mentioned about Imam Hussain. Our Imam said the power. But you saw in the Karbala, they were sacrificing their life. Imam was not using his power. He was just try to sacrifice his life to save the religion and that is the reason Imam was giving anything he had. This like you remember why we are commemorating Shahadat of Imam Hussain since 14 years because his Shahadat is his sacrifice is so big. We have no comparison at all in anywhere. No one sacrificed like Imam Hussain. He sacrificed his whole family, he sacrificed everything Whatever he But you see, when he was sacrificing, what is thinking? He's still thinking about us. There's reason we think about it. If Imam was not thinking about us, Allah never made that connection between us and Imam Hussain. Imam sent salam to us. How Imam said, when Imam came to the Imam Zainul Abdin to visit last time, what he said, Oh, my son Imam Zainul Abdin, Oh, my son Zainul Abdin. Whenever you see my Shia, my follower, deliver my salam to them. You see, that is a very big thing. When Imam sends salam to us and we become entitled for his salam, that means we are saved from any bad thing. Why? Because his salam is, what is the meaning of salam? Peace be upon you. When Imam pray for us, 
His prayer is so fruitful for us. There is no doubt about it. So that's it. The Imam is remembering us in that hard and tough situation. We must remember where Imam, whenever we get chance, and especially in this very pleasant environment, we have to remember where Imam. And if you are remembering, you are lucky to entitle, not only entitled to get dua for Imam, but you can get dua from Bibi Fatma Sayyidah. Tonight is night of fourth Muharram. You know, many, many, like historian and the people then narrated the all event of Karbala. They mentioned they stopped water from the fourth of Muharram. And same with the Muharram, the total water was finished. There was no water left in the tent. So all the family members even kids were thirsty. So it's the Masai we start from here. But you know what happened? Tonight I'm going to just give a brief story of Hazrat Hur salam. Who was the Hur? Hur was the chief of army of Yazid. But he was a literate person, knowledgeable person, and he loved Vivi Fatma that, that was the main reason. He get Salvation, <coughs> Imam forgave him and also he reached to the level. Right? So when he was looking for the Imam Hussain to capture him and take him toward to the Kufa, he met the Imam Hussain. In the desert, when his all water was finished, he was very thirsty, his all army was thirsty, his even all the horses and whatever animal he has with him, all thirsty, and they were searching for Imam. They met the Imam in that situation. As soon as they met the Imam, he surrounded him. And he hold the like rope his hold and asked him to go with him. And what Imam said, Imam said, Your mother cry on your bed. As soon as he said, what he answered, what he replied, he replied, I can answer the same like that. But I know your mother is very, very pious and respectable lady. So I cannot say this thing because I love you father. The Imam came down from his horse and asked, Oh, you want to take us somewhere? But I am looking at your face and other people's face. You are thirsty. So why not my people feed you, you drink water and then we go. And Imam ordered Hazrat Abbas Ali Akbar, Ali Hazrat Anu Muhammad to get the water from the camel and horses. They start feeding all the army. You see, as so the boss of the early bird, they start feeding them, they are giving them water. And what Imam said? Because the boss of the early bird, go and put the water in front of the horses, but don't take out immediately. Because they are unable to drink the water in one time. They need to raise their head and drink again. So that means Imam was asking them to feed them as long as they are thirsty. Don't leave them thirsty. So that when Imam fed everyone and they have finished, they say, oh, we go with us. Then Imam reached to the Karbala, his horse was not moving, and Imam pitched his tent there, and there was the story. But what happened? Night of the Ash, when the Ashura came, servant of Zathur, he brought food and water for Zathur and left in his tent. With the intention he would to eat and drink. But after some time, he came to collect the vessels, take the things back, but he found the water and food is right there. Azathur is not even touching the food. He left the food as it is. And he said, why you are not eating? Why you are not drinking? Are you scared of tomorrow's fighting? You are a very brave person. Why you are scared? He said, I am not scared from tomorrow's fighting. I am only scared because of voices I'm hearing. And what he said, he took his lap and his son, come close to me and hear carefully what type of sound is coming here. What they heard from the tent of Imam Hussain, small kids are crying. They're saying, Alatash, Alatash. They say, when I was thirsty, Imam Hussain gave me water. Today all the children of Bibi Fatima Zahra Salamunda is thirsty. How come I drink water and 
stand in front of me, Fatima Zahra Salam and she's going to ask me, oh God, you had the water, and my children were thirsty. So I'm not going to drink the water. I'm not going to. She was waiting unless the morning, uh, is right, the sunshine. And he, as soon as he saw the light is coming out, he asked his son to just tie my hand and take me to my master. I believe my master is very merciful. He's going to forgive me. And he tied his hand, he put the crown on his hand, and he just walking like a slave toward the tent of Imam Hussain. As soon as Imam Hussain saw somebody is coming, he asked from Hazrat Abbas and Abbar, go, my guest is coming, go and receive him, bring, bring him respectfully. And Hazrat Abbas and Ali Akbar reached the horse, they hold his arm and brought to the Imam. As soon as he reached the Imam, he put his head on the feet of Imam Hussain and asked, Oh my master, I brought you here. And the person who caused this all the problem for you, there's any chance you forgive me. He's asking, Oh Mola, can you forgive me? And then Imam Hussain lift his arms and hug him, say, Oh Lord, your mother gave you a very beautiful name. Home means free. You're not on, you are not only free in this world, but you are also free in hereafter. <laughs> I'm not only forgiving your sin, but my Lord Allah SWT also going to forgive your sin. You're free. As soon as we heard this message, God he said, Oh my Master Hussain, you gave me very big reward, but I want one thing from you. Can you give permission to my son? He can go and sacrifice life for sake of you. Because I want to feel how parents feel when their kids are suffering. They are in that type of situation. Imam first denying us, this is my wish. Please, O oh Master, fulfill my this wish. And Imam grant permission to his son. His son, poor son, he went to battlefield, start fighting. As soon as he's fighting, because he's fighting with the big army. He cannot fight for long. As soon as he gets injured and he starts like falling down from horse. He called for help. As soon as call received by Hazrat Hur, he's rushing toward the battlefield to help his son. Before, before he reached, what he found? He found Imam Hussain is standing there before him. He reached before Hur reached to his son. And what he saw? Imam Hussain is sitting on the ground while the Hur head is on his lap. He's looking at Hur eyes. He said, Oh, Hur, your son is so lucky. Before his death, his head is on the lap of Imam Hussain. And as soon as Imam was looking in his eyes, what he saw, the Hur son is close to death. And who is preparing? He's lifting his sleeves. And he's ready to lift the body of his son. Imam asked, what are you doing? What are you preparing for? You say, oh my master, my son is going to die. I'm going to carry his body to the tent. Imam said, you never heard what my grandfather said. It's not good to parents carry the body of young children. So when your son is going to die, we are here. I came here to, I'm going to carry the body of your son because it's not permissible for parents to carry their person's body in this country because it's so shocking, so painful for them. So we, I'm going to help you immediately when Pursa, my master is so merciful, he's helping in this condition. I'm going to tell one word. Oh, who wait for a few moments. Why? Because this is the morning. As soon as Asr time is going to come, Imam Hussain is going to go and help Hazrat Ali Akbar. Only at the time Imam Hussain was alive, when he reached to the body of Hazrat Ali Akbar, he tried to lift the body of Ali Akbar, tried to bring to the tent. No one going to be there to help Imam Hussain. At that time, oh, who come and tell Imam Hussain, Oh, Hussain, this is not allowed in Sharia to carry your son's body and take to the tent. I am here to help you. But Imam going to be alone. He tried to bring the body of Ali Akbar. But there was a no help for Imam. A small kids going to come. And they help Imam to carry the body of Ali Akbar to bring for Umm Layla. 
to bring for Hazrat Zainab. Say, I'm a Lazin as a Lamu. I am a Kalabin and Kalabu. Along his father, I'm a Muhammad. 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 Along his father, I'm a Muhamm